We're going to talk about how to love our, our parish priests. Hey, I'm Father Mark Mary with the Franciscan Friars of the Renewal. And this is Ascension Presents. Some of you may know this, some of you may not. Uh, I am a priest. I'm a Franciscan priest. One of the things about the, the Franciscan Friars of the Renewal is that we don't run parishes. Um, and I live with 20 other friars. I say this because uh, what my life looks like and my priesthood looks like is, is very, very different um, than what we call like the Austin priests, like the, the pastors, those who are at your, your local parish. The hope for this video is to actually, as a priest, but as a non-pastor, as a non diocesan priest, talk about how we, um, as parishioners, help care for and love and, and kind of be part of this culture and this environment which, which supports and sets up our Dawson priest um, for success and fidelity and health and holiness. One observation, one point we have to make is this, is uh, a lot of priests have failed uh, big time and very publicly in pastors um, throughout history, but in, in, a, in a cute way uh, th this last century, we're very aware of this, right? And priests, right, um, they're free men which means that like you can't you can't point fingers at something else like this bad thing happened because of this situation like at the end of the day um, it does come down to our choices right and so there is real accountability and and hopefully there continues to be more and more accountability so that's that's just what we have to start with what I want to say though is that as well as this we don't want to make it harder on our pastors uh, than we need to to be faithful and to be healthy and to be holy we can create an environment which really makes it difficult though it's still possible. Or we can, we can kind of create a little bit more of a healthy environment. Let's just take a kind of a little observation of the situation. I care a lot for, for my, my brother Dawson Priest because in many situations, it's, it's really difficult, right? And, and, and this is where we're at now. And I think it's going to keep growing. Like you have these, these priests um, who just want to give their, their lives to the Lord, uh, who aren't experts in everything, who, you know, a couple years, you know, out of, out of, after their ordination, they become a pastor of, you know, a number of, a number of different you know, like churches and, and they're on their own and they're stressed out and they have a lot of kind of criticism and negativity. And it's just, they're kind of overworked, underappreciated often. often. And that's just not a, a recipe for success. You know, just recently I was, I was visiting a, a priest friend of mine who's a, a little bit younger than me. And he was showing me, you know, his eight different churches and he's the guy, right? He's the priest. And so he's got to be there as priest, but he's also there as, as <laughs> running the staff and doing the finances and uh, managing the buildings and all that. Certainly he has a team, but he's the one like overseeing this, right? And what he, All he wanted to do was to pray and celebrate mass and minister <laughs> to God's people. That's a hard situation to be in, but that's not an uncommon situation. Another one is I was visiting a priest at his rectory. I was staying the night and it was about, uh, he's a great priest really faithful, really works hard, just like pours himself into to those at the school, those at the parish. And it was about 10 o'clock on Saturday night, right? So 10 o'clock on Saturday night, like most people are not still working 10 o'clock at Saturday night. What happened was this kind of facilities emergency. This isn't exactly what it is, but to give you a uh, kind of context, it was like, you know, there, um, there was a, a, a pipe that burst in the basement, which is where all of the sort of the paper documents of everyone's like baptismal records and all that sort of stuff have been kept for the last hundred years. So that's an emergency. So he goes and he has to try and solve this problem, right? Understandable. One thing that happened is that there's this nocturnal adoration uh, that happens starting at 1030 in the evening that he has the keys for that he was supposed to go unlock it. And so because of the emergency, he wasn't able to go and unlock the church on time. And he got there about, whatever it was, 15, 20 minutes late. The gentleman who was there to attend this adoration, when he finally sees him coming, um, instead of saying like, oh, hey, Father, thanks for coming. It's all right. What's going on? Begins to cuss him out. You know, and this is at 1045 on a Saturday night after this priest has poured himself out in so many ways. You know, and that's just hard. And that's just hard. And, and being overworked and stressed out and being criticized like, like that, right? Like it, it really makes a man vulnerable to alcoholism, to, to gambling, to other sins against the flesh, right? And so again, um, each man, each priest is free. And in the context of really difficult situations, he can be faithful. But can we, uh, as a church, 
also help to support our priests, right? Because like, there's no question of how important uh, the health and the holiness of our priests are for the ongoing renewal like of the church and of the world. So what can we do? What can we do? I'm going to say we can we can pray, we can we can sacrifice, and we can support. Like number one, I, I and I feel this pretty strongly. Um, I think we all have a bit of a duty to pray for our pastors every day. So if you're at a parish and you have you have a pastor, maybe you have a couple of priests there, can you as an individual and can you as a family make sure that you pray for them by name every day? Like that's that's really, really important. That's the least we can do. Um, if you are criticizing and you are critiquing and you are not praying, like come on. All right, so we gotta be praying for for our priests. Number two, and again, I, I feel pretty pretty convicted of this. Can you make a little sacrifice for your priests, uh, particularly your pastors? It makes a lot of sense to me. What I'm, what I'm thinking here is, okay, it doesn't have to be the same sacrifice always, but hey, for this year, for Father McGivney, uh, I'm not going to have dark chocolate, right? And so the year goes by. Next year, okay. This year for Father McGivney, uh, we're not going to drink hard alcohol. Okay, so you can have beer, you can have wine, no hard alcohol. This year for Father McGivney, I'm going to give up chocolate chip cookies. I can still have ice cream. I can still have brownies. Chocolate chip cookies are kind of my favorite. I'm going to give up chocolate chip cookies, right? There's a real spiritual dynamic in battle in which the demons have their bullseye on our priests because we know that the, the rise and the fall of many is going to be kind of determined by uh, the faithfulness of the priest. And so if you can get a priest, you're going to get a lot of other people to fall as well. So to help support them, uh, we can make this little sacrifice, like a prayer united with sacrifice. As, as again, Pope John Paul II talked about, there's no greater force in human history than prayer united with sacrifice. Can we, can we out of love and a, out of love of the priesthood and understanding the importance of the priesthood, can we make a sacrifice um, for our pastors? Thirdly, um, can we offer some sort of support and encouragement? And that can, that can look like a lot of things. Uh, as a pastor, as somebody who's in charge of a lot of things, you're going to receive a whole lot of criticism. You're going to hold a, a whole lot of feedback and negativity. And there is a place for that. You know, people aren't going to like your your homily or they're not going to like your mass time and they're not going to like your mass length. They're not going to like the music or they're not going to like the the banners or whatever it is. And and Father, right? Father, you know, hopefully he's just pouring himself out and he's trying to live a life of sacrifice and he's trying to do the best he can. And he's going to receive a lot of criticism. Can we make sure that he's also hearing some encouragement and some support and so what can that look like? Um, again, it's going to take some time and effort, but I think like the priesthood's important and Father's important. And as a sign of gratitude, um, you know how great it would be if on you know one of his homilies, if it speaks to you, take a little moment to write him an email or write him a letter. Hey, Father, on Sunday, you said this word. It resonated with me, this, me in this way. Hey, just thank you for your priesthood. Thank you for your fatherhood. Um, I, God bless you. I'm praying for you. Can you, as many do, can you invite Father over for dinner? Um, can you, uh, with the kids, like write them a little card or something? I'm telling you this, like I've been in a lot of rectories and often what father needs isn't cupcakes or cookies. It's a great sign of love, like 110%. But father can only eat so much, right? And there's, there's a lot of people who are good people who want to give this stuff. And so uh, I've seen, you know, the, the, the freshly baked muffins sort of live on the shelf until they go bad and they end up in the, in the trash can, right? But I've also seen this. I've also seen this um, again and again, again. Like the muffins usually end up maybe in the trash can. But if there's like a picture, like especially from kids, like of, of the priest or something like that, hand drawn with like their names on it, like that type of thing goes up on the wall and it never comes down. That type of thing goes up in father's office and it never, never comes down. Like he, 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 we want to be, our pastors, they want to be real spiritual fathers. And when they have an experience of that, it really resonates and it really helps and it really encourages and supports all right so 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 again like words of encouragement letters something like that making him feel like he's part of the family that is going to do a huge amount to create a space and a little bit of margin so that father's not just trying to tread water and to try and get through you know life isolated and alone um here's one other very sort of practical suggestion uh, coming up in holy week right it's, it's holy thursday and Holy Thursday is a, is a special day in which we celebrate the institution of the Eucharist and the priesthood. I'd really love for there to be this, this kind of development of a tradition of in preparation for um, Holy Thursday, the Christmas, all of that, 
uh, that parishioners and that families take this time to kind of like have Father's Day, to take this time, not like in the celebration, but this is a great time to write a letter. Um, this is a great time to send a little word of encouragement. This is a great time to send in, like a spiritual bouquet or something like that. It's a day in which we're, we're honoring and reverencing and celebrating the priesthood. And it's a great day. It's a great day for us to make sure our, our particular Dawson priests feel loved and supported and, and received and seen and all that, okay? And lastly, I could just get into Holy Week, which is like a really busy time for Father. Having that love, that support to get into to busy, to, to Holy Week, again, it's just going to do a lot. Um, Father's a grown man, and he's a disciple, and, and he is responsible for his following with the Lord, and he's free. And he's going to be judged on his yeses and his noes, his fidelity or not. But as a church, like we can also help set him up for success by praying for him, by helping to protect him through our own sacrifices, and through and through through encouraging him and letting him feel like he really is part of the family. I think this is I think this is part of the remedy. I think this is part of the remedy and part of the renewal of the priesthood, just renewing the way in which we care for our pastors. I mean, lastly, like I'm not a pastor. <laughs> this isn't. I have I live with 20 guys. I have a different kind of support system, um, which is but even more it like moves my heart to make sure that we're taking care of of our other brother Doss and uh, priests and pastors. I know you got them. I know you got them. Thank you for watching. Remember, we are pilgrims on this earth. Somos peregrinos, poco a poco, little by little. Vamos a llegar. We're going to make it. God bless you.